In the mid-1950s, the United States secretly designed an aircraft that would fly higher than any fighter, faster than most missiles, and longer than any jet ever built. It was not powered by conventional fuel. Instead, it was designed to run on liquid hydrogen, decades before such technology was considered practical. This aircraft was the Lockheed CL-400 Suntan. The CL-400 was intended to cruise above 90,000 feet, completely beyond interception. It was a reconnaissance aircraft built to survive by altitude and endurance alone. No weapons, no escorts, and no margin for error. If it had flown as planned, it would have rewritten the limits of aviation. Instead, it became one of the most advanced aircraft programs ever canceled in total secrecy. The Lockheed CL-400 Suntan emerged from a very specific Cold War fear. American intelligence believed Soviet air defenses would soon make existing reconnaissance aircraft obsolete. The solution was not stealth, but extreme altitude and endurance. The aircraft needed to fly higher than interceptors and stay airborne for extraordinary durations. Conventional jet fuel could not meet those requirements. Lockheed Skunk Works, led by Clarence Kelly Johnson, proposed a radical answer. The aircraft would be powered by liquid hydrogen instead of kerosene. Hydrogen offered far greater energy efficiency by weight. This made unprecedented altitude and range theoretically possible. It also introduced enormous engineering and logistical challenges. The CL-400 was designed to cruise above 90,000 feet. At that altitude, air density was extremely low and engine performance was marginal. The aircraft's long, slender wings were optimized for thin air. Structural weight had to be minimized at all costs. Every design choice pushed the limits of known aerodynamics. Propulsion became the program's defining challenge. Lockheed worked with Pratt and Whitney to develop engines capable of burning liquid hydrogen. Hydrogen combustion required entirely new fuel systems and safety protocols. Storage tanks had to be heavily insulated and extremely large. Integrating them into an airframe proved extraordinarily difficult. Ground infrastructure posed an equally serious problem. Liquid hydrogen had to be produced, stored, and transported at cryogenic temperatures. No global aviation network existed to support this fuel. Every mission would require specialized facilities. This complexity raised doubts about operational feasibility. Despite these challenges, the project advanced rapidly in secrecy. The aircraft was never intended for public awareness or export. It was conceived as a strategic intelligence tool at the highest level. Few outside the program knew it existed. The CL-400 was a solution built for a very narrow window of history. The CL-400 Suntan's promise rested entirely on its liquid hydrogen engines. These engines offered far greater efficiency by weight than conventional turbojets. They were designed to sustain supersonic crews at extreme altitude for hours. But hydrogen's volatility created immense safety concerns. Even minor leaks could have catastrophic consequences. Testing the propulsion system proved extraordinarily difficult. Cryogenic fuel had to be stored at minus 253 degrees Celsius, requiring massive insulation and new materials. Engine components experienced stresses never before encountered in aviation. Engineers struggled to balance performance with safety. Every test became both a technical and operational challenge. Aerodynamics were equally radical. The aircraft featured long, slender wings optimized for thin, high-altitude air. Structural weight had to be minimized while maintaining stability at Mach 2+. Flight control systems were still mechanical with very little margin for error. Designers borrowed lessons from the U-2 and other high-altitude aircraft. The CL-400 pushed every boundary simultaneously. Logistical challenges were staggering. Hydrogen could not be easily refueled in the field. Specialized ground facilities were required for every mission. 
routes were limited to areas with infrastructure in place. Every takeoff involved careful planning and extensive support. Operational deployment seemed almost impossible. Political pressure began to mount. The United States Air Force questioned whether the CL-400 was realistic. Ballistic missiles were emerging as a faster, cheaper, and more reliable way to gather intelligence. The enormous cost of liquid hydrogen infrastructure compounded concerns. Strategic priorities began shifting away from experimental aircraft. By the late 1950s, Suntan's future was uncertain. Technological breakthroughs were still incomplete. Engineers could solve some problems, but others remained intractable. Every delay increased political scrutiny. The program's ambition was both its strength and its greatest weakness. The CL-400 remains a testament to Cold War ingenuity. Even in its incomplete state, the aircraft influenced later projects. High-speed, high-altitude design lessons informed experimental engines and airframes. Knowledge gained here contributed to later hypersonic and spy aircraft. Suntan may never have flown, but its legacy endured. By 1957, the CL-400 Suntan had become one of the most ambitious aviation projects ever attempted. Its designers aimed to surpass the performance of every existing reconnaissance aircraft. The goal was to fly faster, higher, and longer than any interceptor could follow. Yet every advance revealed new technical hurdles. Ambition and reality were on a collision course. Hydrogen fuel remained the central challenge. Storing, pumping, and burning cryogenic hydrogen safely was unprecedented. Engineers had to design tanks that could withstand flight stresses while preventing leaks. The engines required continuous refinement to remain stable at extreme altitudes. Every innovation carried enormous risk. Airframe design pushed material science to its limits. High altitude, high-speed flight generated intense aerodynamic heating. The fuselage and wings had to remain rigid without adding excess weight. Standard aluminum alloys were insufficient in some areas. Advanced composites were studied, though rarely available in volume. Flight control presented additional difficulty. The aircraft's long, slender wings created stability challenges at supersonic speeds. Control surfaces needed to respond precisely in thin air. Pilots would have operated near the edge of controllable flight. Automation was minimal, increasing the risk. The margin for error was razor thin. Ground support was almost as complicated as flight itself. Liquid hydrogen could not be stored conventionally. Every mission required purpose-built cryogenic infrastructure. Refueling was slow and hazardous. This limited practical deployment options severely. Political winds shifted while the engineers labored. Air Force leaders grew impatient with delays and costs. Ballistic missiles appeared faster, cheaper, and safer for strategic reconnaissance. Public spending scrutiny increased under economic pressure. The Suntan's window of opportunity was closing. By the early 1960s, it became clear the CL-400 would never reach production. No prototype had flown and the cost and risk were mounting. Engineers quietly preserved their research for future projects. The aircraft remained a symbol of Cold War ambition. Its story was one of innovation without operational fulfillment. Despite never taking to the skies, the CL-400 Suntan left a lasting mark on aerospace engineering. Lessons in liquid hydrogen propulsion informed later experimental engines. Engineers gained unparalleled experience handling cryogenic fuels in aviation. These insights would resurface in later space and high-speed aircraft programs. Suntan's influence quietly shaped the future. Aerodynamic research from the project also endured. Long, slender wing designs and high-altitude stability studies were applied elsewhere. Materials developed to withstand heat and stress found use in experimental aircraft. Even concepts for flight control at extreme speeds carried over. 
Suntan's legacy was technical, not operational. The cancellation reflected the shift in strategic priorities. Missiles offered intelligence delivery without risking human pilots. Reconnaissance aircraft were no longer the only solution to Cold War problems. Political leaders favored systems that promised more reliability and lower cost. Suntan became collateral in a changing military doctrine. Public awareness of Suntan was minimal for decades. The program was highly classified, hidden behind skunk work secrecy. Even today, many aviation enthusiasts know little about it. Its story survived mostly through declassified documents. This secrecy adds to its mystique and intrigue. Cost was another critical factor. The infrastructure for liquid hydrogen alone would have been enormous. Operating such aircraft across global missions would have been impractical. Even a single prototype required a huge budget. Political support could not justify further investment. Yet the CL-400 symbolized what was technically possible in the 1950s. Designers dared to imagine a manned aircraft operating beyond Mach 2 at extreme altitude. They experimented with fuels, materials, and airframes decades ahead of their time. Suntan pushed the boundaries of aeronautics. Its ambition remains unmatched. Ultimately, Suntan was a bridge between eras. It marked the end of manned high-speed reconnaissance experiments in favor of missiles and satellites. Its lessons lived on in later aircraft and space programs. The program showed both the potential and the limits of human engineering. The CL-400's legacy is one of daring vision, not operational success. The Lockheed CL-400 Suntan never flew, yet its impact on aviation was profound. It pushed the boundaries of what high-speed, high-altitude aircraft could achieve. Engineers explored liquid hydrogen propulsion decades ahead of its time. Every technical breakthrough set the stage for later experimental aircraft. Suntan proved that ambition can outpace reality. Its cancellation reflected changing priorities during the Cold War. Ballistic missiles offered faster, safer intelligence gathering. Manned high-speed reconnaissance became less relevant. Political and economic pressures ended the program before flight. Suntan became a casualty of progress. Despite this, the aircraft influenced future designs. Concepts from its aerodynamics and materials were reused. Liquid hydrogen research informed later space and aircraft programs. Flight control insights helped manage high-speed stability in other experimental jets. Its legacy was entirely technical, not operational. Secrecy added to its mystique. Very few knew of the program during its development. Even today, CL-400 is little known outside aviation circles. Its story is reconstructed from declassified records. This hidden history fuels fascination. The CL-400 also highlighted the limits of engineering. Speed and altitude alone could not guarantee survivability. Complex fuels, materials, and logistics created nearly insurmountable challenges. Technology may have been ready, but the world was not. Ambition met reality, and reality won. Yet Suntan remains a symbol of Cold War ingenuity. It represents the daring and vision of engineers in a tense geopolitical era. Even in failure, it advanced aerospace knowledge. The program inspired ideas for future hypersonic and reconnaissance aircraft. Sometimes the greatest influence comes from what never flies. In the end, the CL-400 Suntan teaches an enduring lesson. Innovation often arrives before practical application. Bold visions can fail politically even if technically possible. Its story reminds us that progress is as much about timing as ability. The aircraft never flew, yet its impact still echoes through aerospace history.